as in this case, you're playing amateur police officer, amateur detective, you're gathering evidence, I promise you they're not gathering the evidence in such a way that it's going to be admissible. It requires a certain level of expertise that the lay public doesn't have, that the police officers do. So last year there was some talk about whether the evidence I collected would stick in court. I knew it would. Now, quite some time has passed, we can see the results. All of those charged, ultimately, pleaded guilty or were found guilty at trial. Most dodge additional jail time and prison due in part to taking the plea deals, but as part of their probation, some of them were banned from the internet for a few years, which I thought was interesting. Um, most will be off the sex offender registry until the early 2040s. Um, they're all felons now. So, life goes on, and I'm still pretending to be an underage boy or girl online. I've been doing this for quite a while now, but more recently I've been posing younger and younger and younger. 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, as opposed to 13, 14, or 15. And what I found is that most predators treat me the same as if I say I am a young teen um, when I say that I'm prepubescent. And that is deeply more disturbing to me that uh, a lot of men and women out there are uh, willing to do this to, to someone so young um, and be unfazed by that. Let's talk about female predators for a second, okay? They're out there. Um, I dealt with one. I dealt with one. Um, who, <laughs> she was pretty attractive, uh, but physically, but, but really, really ugly. Okay, I don't care if someone is good looking, right? If they want to have sex with a kid, then that is, that's irrelevant. There's a huge stigma in our society about that right now. Ladies charged with statutory sex crimes. How should they be treated any different from the public than uh, men charged with the same crimes? They shouldn't. The, the public reaction should be n no different. Um, but from my experience, female predators aren't as ubiquitous as male predators online. Uh, they just aren't. I believe most female predators prefer a much closer bond to their victim, someone they already know, um, as opposed to some boy or girl that they meet online. I want to do a, a separate video, a more polished video about that later, um, because I really want to talk about manipulation and the all the facets that, that come with the art of manipulation. Things to look out for inside the mind of an online predator and how they go about getting what they want. Um, it requires some level of skill on their part and uh, therefore it requires uh, a lot of vigilance on ours because some predators are um, more cunning than, than, than others. And in sensitive circumstances I, I, I try to be very careful in, in what, I, what I show you because um, you know, some predators are watching, they're taking notes, and a, a very few, um, only a small minority of, of predators are actually adapting like a, like a superbug would be to antibiotics. It's, it's a difficult discipline for me because I want to show you guys a lot, but I, I simply can't. We have creeps watching this. Uh, a, f a fatal mistake would be to underestimate the intelligence of any predator. Some people are quicker than others, right, and they want to evade. They know what the consequences can be, and they're willing to go to great lengths to try to avoid those consequences and not getting caught. And so uh, they still want to do their thing because there's, there's, something, there's something wrong. In any case, if you're a predator and the little boy or girl you think you're talking to says let's meet at Taco Bell, you better run. With the amount of attention my channel receives today, it would be foolish to reveal predators' identities while they're free, potentially leading them to destroy evidence of other crimes they've committed. Once they know they're exposed and during an investigation, they could very well destroy evidence and I don't want to be the catalyst for that. Some, if not all, of the people I'm dealing with now have histories. And them trying to have sex with me posing as an underage girl boy could very well be the tip of the iceberg to a much deeper skeleton closet that you're about to see. When I first started talking with predators, I was, I was very progressive in this idea that wouldn't that be cool if, if these predators could get help so that they wouldn't victimize children? Wouldn't that be cool if, if we could really get to the root of the problem and professionally help these people somehow, some way? Um, and I remember the naysayers saying, you know what, these, these people, they cannot be helped. You know, I was, I was that guy who would say, you know what, maybe they can, you know, because that would be revolutionary, right? If we could really get down to the nitty gritty and, and why, what compels these people to do what they do and what we can do to stop it. As a society, that would be so great. But through experience, the more I talk to these people, the more I realize that I just don't see it. I think at this point, it would be wishful thinking to think that 
someone that brags to me, thinking I'm an underage girl, that brags to me about how many other other underage girls they've been in contact with, how many other underage girls they've had sex with. Honestly, they just don't care. They don't care about getting help. They, they just want one thing and one thing only. You know, they're not, they don't want help. I mean, it's, it's almost, it's almost unreal. The last, the last few predators I've talked to, their stories about what they've done before, it's just unbelievable. Um, just these, these, these old men bragging about having sex with little kids. Oh, met this little girl at a pool party. We had sex. Um, it's just like, you think this guy is really going to get help? There's no way. And then this other guy I was talking to, uh, this is really graphic. He was, uh, he wanted to have sex with me, uh, thinking I'm a young girl, um, but anal sex. And he wanted to congregate my friends together to also have like a big orgy full of underage girls like this, this guy. Um, and it, he, there's no way he's thinking that, oh, I need help. I, I need, this is really bad. No, he's, he's thinking about having sex with underage girls. He doesn't care about anything else. And then another time, uh, real recently, a guy was coaching me on how to get my anus prepped for anal sex. And in extremely graphic detail and days and upon days and days of him explaining to me what I'm doing and and uh, how to do that. And just, it was just sick. Um, but what you can't change, certainly you can't change people like that, I think. It's my belief you can't change people like that. What you can't change, you can certainly destroy. And part of that is informing people on what to look out for so that they avoid things like this. And that's why I'm doing this slideshow. First is to know your enemies. Who are these people? Who are these predators? Well, from my experience, I can't help but to ignore some striking similarities between them. I just, not, not, not all predators are like this, but most that I've dealt with are. And that is most predators have very low self-esteem and low confidence. It, it blows my mind because there are so many adults out there that want to have a relationship with other adults. There, there are so many nice looking, nice personality women out there that would love to have uh, a significant other, right? But predators, they, they don't see them having such things. They don't, they, <laughs> they don't, they, they, they target younger people because they're more prone to manipulation. Just anything generally that they're just very low confidence. They may act very supreme and they may act like they're, they're really, they're really confident. And it comes off as cocky too. When I'm, when I'm talking, they pretend to be an underage girl. I see a lot of cockiness and also a lot of, yeah, there's, there's sick people. Anyway, I can see right through their arrogance and deep down they know they're losers, but behind a computer screen, they think they're the best thing since sliced bread. Also very analytical. It's weird because some of them are pretty stupid. Others are pretty smart, but Mostly all of them. I mean, even if they're smart or stupid, most of them, they, th they think and they think really, really deeply. Perhaps it's because they know what they're doing is wrong and they know they could get in big trouble. That's, that could be it. For instance, sometimes when I'm talking to a predator, if I don't reply, they just keep, they keep on, they, they see that signal of me not replying and they, that sparks them to to think of oh and what if she's thinking this or what if she's thinking that and uh, they make excuses even when I'm not thinking anything <laughs> they just they just make excuses like oh well if that's not okay then we can meet here and then oh no but we can meet here if this will work or oh wait a minute so once you get out of school here it'd be good if uh, you go over here and it's just it's it's super analytical most predators that I talk to very few are are in relationships but it, but if they are they feel like they don't have enough attention at home they may not have many friends even though sex is a huge aspect of of the conversation and their intentions some of it is they just want someone by their side someone to talk to sometimes i run into people who are just lonely they're not they're not predators uh, this happens they even though it's weird that you know an adult would want to talk to an underage boy or girl online in their free time all the time even though that's weird sometimes i run into people who are simply lonely they're not necessarily predators um and other times i'm talking to someone who i think just wants to be friends for instance when uh <laughs> like weeks and weeks later since i'm very patient 
weeks and weeks later I realized that they are a predator because you know predators some are quicker than others to execute on uh, what they intend to do with the person who they think they're talking to um, but you know very subliminally sometimes uh, you can see hints early on by the way they talk sometimes a predator would say something uh, if I say I'm 14 and the predator says I'm 30 and if the predator says oh you know age is just a number when I hear that I hear that a lot age is just a number I'm so tempted to say and, re and, and reply prison is just a word but I don't I don't break character I don't I don't say that <laughs> when I'm talking to a predator I think I let alone them thinking that they're talking to an underage kid I, I think that oh my gosh how can ones be so so aroused it's just they are so so horny it's ridiculous it's just ridiculous that they're they're talking to they're spending all their their free time talking to who they think to be an underage kid about about all sorts of these these uh some of them have really really different fetishes too um but besides that it's just incredible how sex crazed they are it's just ridiculous it's like it's like that's all they ever think about every day every minute every second it's like that's all they're thinking about it's a predator will say like oh what did you have to eat and then it'll be like, okay cool finally we're talking about something and then it just like immediately it just evolves into a, a sexual conversation it's just like oh my god like can you take a break from that but uh no it's this on their mind <laughs> like a hundred percent of the time it feels like but really you know i i've tried to figure this out as much as i want to figure this out i know i shouldn't because like really what's the point in knowing what what is inside the mind of, of a predator of course we want to know because we want to solve this issue if that's possible that way um but you know sometimes uh, studies have shown that people who are victimized are more likely to victimize other people than people who are not victimized for instance of course that's not it'd be a fallacy to think that's <laughs> that's that that's you know widespread and certain a certain fact which it's not um but really there are so many factors i have no it, it could be it could be genetics it, it could be uh it could be all sorts of things that we don't know yet but regardless whatever their backgrounds are in my opinion it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter uh, because it's what it's what they do you can be you know you can you can be the worst predator ever i don't care about how bad your past was i don't care about that no one should um, if you're willing to to do really really evil things to children, I don't care about that. I don't care about you, because what predators do is directly through choice. It is not because of how bad they had it as a kid being victimized. It is not how bad uh, they are at at uh, at women, or 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 it is not because of how low their self esteem is. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with how they actually act, how they deceive, countless times. I am told lies. Predators telling me that, for instance, they are much younger than what they really are for a couple reasons. The first reason I see this more commonly is they lie about their age, they pretend to be much younger, closer to the, the victim's age, so that they won't they think they won't scare off the underage boy or girl. I see this all the time. It is a way to relate to the person to gain friendship, which is more it's more it's it's more of having a congruent age. Um, but another another case I've seen was predators lying about their age because if they think that I could be someone undercover, someone looking to bust them, they think that if I if I lie about my age, then maybe maybe if this person is someone that is looking to get me in trouble, someone who really isn't an underage boy or girl, then they'll back off if if they think that I am fourteen as well for instance but it doesn't work that way because sometimes when I'm talking to someone who I don't know to be a predator it takes a while to figure out at first and uh, with with certain things that I suspect that it wouldn't be from someone really that that young it just sometimes just common sense it just doesn't make sense and I've, I've seen this time and time again where uh, later on I catch them I, I see inconsistencies I call them out on this and I've had one person actually tell me that oh I told you I was only seventeen because uh, if I told you my real age then uh, if you were a, if you were a, a cop then um, if I if I say that I'm this young then you would back off you wouldn't you would uh, he wouldn't pursue me 
I've seen this a few times actually. Some predators do not lie about their age, others do with only a couple years disparity, saying they're 33 when they're actually 35, like it makes a big difference. Also, some lie about their physical appearance or abilities. You know, they may say they have a six pack when I can tell that they probably don't. <laughs> they want to appear as attractive as possible. They want to appear so great. And so, of course, they're going to lie. They're not going to say that, oh, yeah, I have a beer gut. Oh, I sit on my butt all day. No, no. Instead, they're going to say, I have a six pack. I go to the gym. I'm there all the time. So it's it, a total illusion is was what it is. Uh, to gain the, the victim's admiration, I guess. It's very common to, for them to give me photos of themselves from many years ago or photos uh, of some, some other guy that uh, isn't them, that they try to pass off as them. Also, you wouldn't believe how many predators lie when I tell them, oh, what am I doing, you ask? I'm doing my homework. And they say, they say oh, well, what subject do you want? Say something, something easy like algebra. I say, oh yeah, I'm doing algebra. You know, young, young grade school stuff. And they say, they say something like, oh, I'm good at that. I say, okay, can you help me with these matrices? And it's, it's, it's like they have to look it up themselves. It's like, oh, guy, you're gonna help me, right? And it's, it's like they don't know what they're doing, but they pretend. They, they totally pretend under the guise of, of, of them being so smart. They pretend that they know what they're doing when when really it, they're, they stink at math. Perhaps he's one of the five out of four people that have trouble with fractions. This is a big one. They may pose as someone famous. Now this this is all over. You pro you've probably seen this on the news recently. Um, there was a news story about this guy in Australia who was pretending to be Justin Bieber online. And check this out. He had hundreds of girls these girls, young girls, really thought they were talking to Justin Bieber. The, the predator convinced these girls that he was Justin Bieber somehow, in some way, and uh, received a ton of nude photos of all of these underage girls. I think like 900 or something, and um, over the course of several years. And uh, this, happens, this happens all the time, because if you can fool someone that you're somewhat famous and that oh my gosh and suddenly they're thinking that they're talking to their idol they're gonna they're gonna be like sheep and they're gonna they're gonna do what what uh is ordered to them and it's just it, it kind of it baffles me even the police were i saw the press conference the police were shocked that that they had so many victims in this case um but really i mean some predators are good and i see this time and time again where these predators pose as someone they're not really someone that they're not and uh, that's where a lot of victims uh, can, can, it's really bad. Groom. Build trust and become friends, first of all. It really depends on the predator how long they want to take it before they start talking sexual. Sometimes, uh, I, I don't know if they're a predator, like I've said before, um, it, it takes a while sometimes. Other predators, they get right into it, but some others are patient and they want to uh, groom the victim. They want to butter up the victim to what's going to come. And a lot of times this involves complimenting the victim and and uh, just giving the victim so much attention. So now, the states of, of these victims, sometimes they're emotionally vulnerable, they're lonely as well, could be. Um, they may be going through some hardships at home. You know, these are young people, and so they deal with challenges, as any young person does. And when you have an adult that comes around that, that gives so much attention to, to this victim, then... Uh, they're looked at as a confidant, someone they can talk to, really close personal matters. Exclusivity is, is a huge part of the grooming process. This friendship bond transforms into something that is secretive, something that uh, is, is just from, it goes from small talk and then it goes to talking about more, more personal things and uh, talking about maybe some sexual curiosities, which I'll, I'll get to in a second. Um, but it's more of, hey, keep this a secret. Um, but, uh, tell me what, what, like, what, what you like doing or like, what do you do in your spare time? And, um, the predator is often very dependent on, on the person and, uh, expects the, the victim to be dependent on him or her as well. Um, it's to have some sort of a, 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 a two-way bond that isn't shared with any other person. Just don't tell anyone about, about this. And so it, it's part of trust too. If I trust you, you trust me. And it's, it's kind of symbiotic in, in that regard, but all for the, the evil purposes. Predators often attempt 
to make the person they're, they're talking to responsible for their feelings. I see this a lot where predators say, oh, I'm sad. And I say, well, why are you sad? Oh, because you won't talk to me late at night or something like that. They always try to uh, almost direct the guilt at, at the victim um, in anything, little things uh, and then later big things. It's an attempt at, at appealing to the victim's emotions to get the victim to, to control the victim, uh, essentially. Now what happens when predators want to transition the conversation into a very sexual one, what they often do at first is they'd be very vague in, in how they talk. And this has to do with, I think, a couple of reasons. One is they may have cold feet at first because they know they're stepping into illegal territory when, they're, when they begin talking about really sexually charged stuff to a minor. But another, another reason is uh, they want to get, get the victim to use her mind. They don't. Some of them fear the victim running away if they if they say what they truly intend to do, and uh, so they they kind of they they take steps at a time instead of going the going the elevating all the way up the staircase. Some of them can be very smooth as how how they introduce sex into the conversation. A predator may may say something one day like, "Oh yeah, oh what you're not in bed yet? You're a naughty girl." I see this a lot where they say that you're a naughty girl. It's an attempt at seeing the person's innocence. And um, but later they're they're very vague, like, oh, we should meet sometime. Oh, we should just hang out. Maybe uh, I know you're a naughty girl. It's hint, hint. They say things like that with a smiley face, a lot of emoticons, stuff like that. A predator will test the victim as f how far he or she will go. And this doesn't have to do with, with, with sexual things at first. It has to do with, uh, for instance, uh, a predator saying, oh, you should stay up this late so we can talk and when no one's around. I've, I've read a few studies where um, children are more prone to manipulation when it's really, really late at night. It was a very interesting article, but it, it talked about that and it talked about how the mind isn't, isn't f fully aware and also has to do with the idea that no one else is around. So more of uh, the exclusivity factor where, yeah, the parents aren't around, you have no one behind your shoulder. You can talk to me freely. You can really reveal your uh, your inhibitions. And of course, I see predators use uh, sexual lingo all the time, and, and uh, they call the victim names. Um, most recently, I've been called as posing as a 13-year-old. I've been called butt slut and anal princess. Another big one is sex slave. Oh, and pet. Pet is a is a big one. Um, it's so weird. It's like you'll be my sexual pet, like, and then I'll I'll get a message. I wake up in the morning. I'll get a message. It'll, it'll say something like, it'll say something like, like, hey pet, I'm gonna have to have you do this. And it's, it, yeah, pet, anal princess, butt slut, uh, girl. You know, girl is probably the less demeaning out of all of them, of course. But it's it's just not it's just not right. It's it's a way to objectify the the victim, exploiting the victim's curiosities, insecurities, and vulnerabilities. This has a lot to do with questions. Some people think that there's nothing wrong with asking questions. Well, if, this, if it's a predator doing that, there's a huge problem with that. You don't, you don't ask, you, you stay away from, from these, these young girls, these young boys. You don't ask them questions about how often do you masturbate? Uh, oh, have you uh, ever done anything with a guy? Etc. It's just, it's just screwed up. And once that dialogue opens, there's no turning back. The predator's given an inch and he takes a mile. He wants to go all the way. He wants to know every detail. The, the very, the, the, they've, they, want, they want very descriptive texts. They want to know more, and they want to know more, and this is really nasty, but I always wondered why. I'd be talking to a predator, and, he, and he'd, be, he'd be saying, oh, what did you do on this? And he, I'd, I'd be like, what, what, what's going on? And um, he, he, would, he would say, oh, I'm touching myself right now. Just like sick stuff like that, like nasty. And um, this this has to do with the insecurities too. If I say that, oh, you know, I am kind of short, they'll take that and then they will they will say that, oh, you're kind of short, oh, little shorty, and um, they they will they'll they'll just they're just they're just bad people. They're not necessarily like bullies, right? Because they don't want to appear as bullies because then the victim will run off. Um, but they try to be playful and they try to be very sexual and they, they really try to exploit the vulnerabilities of, of young people and their curiosities and their insecurities. They want them to really report on what's going on in their personal, deep personal lives and, um, and, what, and, what, and what they think that, that necessarily the victim won't share with other people. 
but because they may have the trust of this of this predator, um, and they don't see them as predators, of course, um, because they'll have this trust, they're they're easily controlled. And that's what it, what it all boils down to. Some predators, all they want is nude images. Perhaps they may show the victim nude photos of themselves. Um, they'll send a photo of their penis uh, to the underage kid. And really disgusting. This this is not pretty, but it's it's pretty commonplace. Perhaps they'll say, "Oh, do this. I want you to do this exactly like what what is depicted in this video that I'm going to send you." Um, and what's really bad is sometimes once they get a nude photograph of a minor, what some predators do is they say, "Give me another." Oh, you don't you don't want to to give me another a photo of yourself naked. If, if you're not going to do that, then I'm going to leak this. It's going to be all over the internet. Everyone's going to see. Your parents are going to find out. Your friends are going to find out. Your school is going to kick you out. Blah, blah, blah. All of this stuff. Um, and that's called sextortion. There's a word for that. It happens quite a bit. So when the victim doesn't break free from that, that trap, that mental trap, what happens is this, this predator keeps on getting nude photographs and it gets worse and worse and worse because the predator keeps on demanding photos. Otherwise, I'm going to leak all of these. Oh, give me one more. Okay, now I have five of them. If you don't give me the sixth one, then I'm going to uh, release these five. And then it just goes higher and it just accrues and accrues and accrues. And that is, those people should be shot or in prison. Just, they're, they're such a threat. They're such a threat to minors that they need to be stopped or any means necessary. I don't want to advocate extremism or anything like that. So I guess disclaimer that was a uh, uh, hyperbole, but okay, it wasn't. I don't. I'm really don't. I don't really don't like these people. Some predators just want nude photos of children. Others want to meet for sex. Some want both. The people that do want to meet for sex, some of them back out because they're too afraid. Some of them actually follow through with, with trying to meet children for sex. A lot of times the predator will imply that early on, hey, we should meet in real life or we should hang out. Again, it's very vague how they say this sometimes, but some some other times it's pretty obvious. Prerequisite things that, that are mentioned like, uh, do you have protection? Things like that. Oh, I don't want to be pregnant. Don't worry. Don't worry about me. You know, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'll be careful. It's things like that. Um, so it's it's fairly obvious in any case, whether it's implicit or explicit. And what's worse is when the predator says, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you some money for this. Oh, I can I can provide you money for your time. Get that for your time. Yeah, right. Um, or it doesn't necessarily have to be cash. It can be also um, clothes. We can go on shopping sprees. I've had that a few times. We can go on shopping sprees. We can buy you certain things. And... Uh, it's sometimes isn't directly related to to meeting for sex, but certainly the the monetary aspect is is in there, and uh, that's kind of a, like a string attached. They a lot of times use their positions um, as if they are a reputable figure, if if um, if they have a good reputation, if they haven't been arrested for etc cetera, etc. Cetera. What they'll say to the victim is they'll say things like, "No one's going to believe you if you don't do this again." No, if, if this gets out, no one's going to believe you. Or a lot of times they say, yeah, it, you know, you're going to be killed if, if, uh, if, you, if you squeak about this. And not necessarily by the predator, but by the victim's parents. That, oh, if your parents will find out about this, if you say anything, they're going to kill you. Your friends will abandon you. Everyone's going to look at you differently, blah, blah, blah. So what, what the predator will do is they'll aim all of the direction and, and attention to the victim the bad the bad press in the event of this getting out there so of course the predator wants to keep this uh his little secret with the victim that is to ever for be sealed um and the, the predator will 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 guilt trip the victim all the way if the victim does speak out what will happen if there's an investigation if all of it, if all of that is going down the remember these predators are such evil people they do, do not take personal responsibility they're going to they're going to blame the victim is what they're going to do. They're going to do it in court. They're going to do this. They're going to stick with it. And it will be hell. It will be total hell for the victim. I don't want to, I don't want to sugarcoat it and make it sound like it's, oh, it's all good. Because remember, everyone has a defense. Everyone has a legal defense. You have the perpetrator fighting back and saying, oh, it's her fault because uh, uh, she was leading me on. Or Hey, adults should not have sex. They should, they, should, they should not have sex with minors, period. 
they should not be talking to minors online for any sort of sexual purpose, period. And any rational person, such as a juror or a judge, would agree with that. And so screw their defense, just fight it. But what are long-term solutions to this? This is a big problem. Well, uh, kind of self-explanatory, there are two solutions to this, in my opinion. Prison or death. Just keep these people away from, from minors. Um, and definitely, if you run across a predator online, just send a tip to the police or through the cyber tip line. It can be totally anonymous. You don't have to fill in every single form. Every If you don't know if, you know some information, you don't have to fill out everything, of course, if there's nothing to put there. Um, but the cyber tip line, there's a lot of leads that, that generate a ton of arrests, people having tons of child porn on them. And most of the times, it's not just one victim. It's not just one victim. It's a ton of people. You hear about this in the news all the time. So-and-so had thousands and thousands of images of child porn. Like there was this one pastor. Uh, his uh, co-workers were, wanted to play a prank on him, so they went on his computer and they were going to do something to him. But they, on his computer, they discovered a ton of child porn. He was going on Omegle and he was getting little girls to like get all naked and, and, and stuff like that on webcam. And... Um, but just things like this can uncover greater skeletons by these predators. I mean, who knows? Some of them may have little death chambers in their base. We don't know. Or they, they could have, I mean, look at all the abducted children, right? They didn't just disappear. They just, you know, who knows where they are? Something happened to these young minors by other people. And uh, just tell, tell someone about this. Just anyone. It, could, it doesn't have to be the police. It doesn't have to be any sort of authority. Just... Just tell parents, friends, someone close to. There's nothing more gratifying to me than, than hearing about someone speaking up against an abuser. And uh, that's the hardest part is speaking up. But then once, once that happens, there's a train of support that, that follows with that. So don't think it's all doom and gloom. But it's a pain. Nonetheless, it is a pain uh, to, to really go through the, the, the process of coming forward against abusers and sticking out with the prosecution which helps it completely helps if there if there's a, a, a face to the allegations uh, a name um and and getting these guys behind bars that totally helps i've spoken to the prosecution about this um but more on this a ton more on this later on, on how to speak up because it is a process and it, it, it there is there is some information that i think you would find helpful there are so many more manipulation techniques used by predators who do not target their victims online that I have not touched on. It's a whole different game for non-internet predators because it involves not only deceiving victims, uh, but also gaining the trust of the victim's family, friends, etc. It's, it, it, there are many more permutations in that regard. But universally, trust is the greatest theme in any predator's playbook. Now to make a point, I've disclaimed in the past, don't fully trust anyone, including me, because even though I trust myself and my intentions, you shouldn't fully trust anyone no matter what they say because you don't know what they think. You may not know what they want. If you, if you do know what they want, and then sometimes you would be shocked to know the truth because a lot of these times when these people get busted for such crimes, no one knew, right? Oh my goodness, he's such a great guy. I had no idea that my pastor had child porn on his computer. I had no idea he was going on Omegle and getting little girls to get naked. You know, so biggest thing is keep your guard high. So back in October when I announced a meetup event in one of my videos, a lot of you expressed concerns about what may happen at the meetup, and I like seeing those reactions because it, it conveyed to me, in effect, what I've been preaching. Before your information, the meetup went well. We congregated at a park, and together we ventured to the courthouse. Uh, no one died, so that was good. I posted a photo on my, my Facebook page about it. Uh, you, should, you should go there in case of case if I'm banned from YouTube again or something so you know what's going on. I've been sort of busy lately but I, I miss, I really miss making YouTube videos and uh, I, I miss, I miss all that. Um, I miss my old channel too but uh, future videos will include um, coming forward against abusers, what to expect, how to testify against abusers, uh, metaphorically how to kill abusers and the power you feel they have over you, how to be more confident less anxious person and um, how to, maybe how to hack predators no I just there won't be a video about that but there will be some interesting revelations coming up in the future and of course the female predator video my experiences with them the associated stigmas in our society today about them 
it'll be almost like a documentary. It'll be, it'll, it should be, it should be really controversial, and, and uh, it's, I, I can't wait for that. But that's that's way down the road because that's that's going to be a big project. It's it's nice now, not having to deal with uh, some some people freaking out every time I post something. The media trespassing all the time. The media going over to my parents' house, even in my parents' neighbor's house. <laughs> Uh, it's and process process service trying to find me. It's nice not dealing with that. All that got kind of annoying. I find pleasure operating more clandestinely. I, I find myself being more productive as a result, having less distractions. Of course, I miss showing you what I what I've been doing. I have a lot of unreleased footage. Nothing too nothing too wild or crazy. So, police and prosecutors watching now. I know you're watching. Don't 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 worry. There are no videos of me torturing or killing predators. Contrary to some accounts I've read online, uh, there are no deep web videos about that. So um, don't bother trying to find those as much as I wish they exist. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I have to be careful about what I say and do because a lot of eyes are on me now. It's kind of weird. It's like it's like I'm in a zoo and people are like watching. This. I don't like that. It could it could pose issues. I remember last year being in a, a felony criminal trial where. I was being cross-examined on the stand in front of the jury, and the defense attorney that was cross-examining me, he mentioned my website, and he took little bits and pieces, and he aggregated them and painted them uh, in the context to where he wanted the jury to believe that I was the bad guy. And I didn't like that. I didn't like my content being cherry-picked like that. And also, he mentioned the blind guy video, and he, uh, he did some research, and he, he chose what he wanted and uh, was trying to get the jury to sympathize with, with, with the blind guy in the video. Uh, I guess, quick, quick anecdote, since I, since I brought it up. Uh, he said, Mr. Swears, you tricked a blind man into thinking you were an underage girl. <laughs> he said, you dressed up like a girl, you wore little cute pink mittens, and you... <laughs> you, had, you, had a, you, you were even wearing a bra. Is this true, Mr. Spears? Uh, <laughs> I was wondering why the, why the prosecution wasn't objecting uh, to these comments by the defense attorney because um, it had nothing to do with the case at hand. This case wasn't about the blind guy. Um, but looking back, it was, it was a good idea on their part because it showed that I had nothing to hide if, if I had to field all these questions and show that I had good intentions. You know, and then let me make that point to the jury. But the defense attorney wanted to make the point that I took advantage of this man because he was disabled and then I was wrong because I was... Uh, uh, <laughs> mentally fooling around with uh, a, a legally blind man, uh, but when the substance of the case was almost being censored, it was like, let's talk about that. Right? Of course, the defense attorney didn't want to go there, but I did, you know, since he brought it up. In a real condescending manner, uh, the, the attorney, he, uh, you know how when, when, someone, when someone looks down on you, so to speak, they, they have their glasses and they go like this, like, like, I'm like, you really did that? He looked at me like that and he said, a blind man. You did this to a legally blind man. <laughs> In my reply to that, I wanted it to be powerful. Um, I wanted the jury to understand that, that yes, the man was legally blind. He could see a little bit, but he couldn't see a whole lot. Um, but who cares if he's blind if he wanted to have sex with a kid, right? I wanted, I wanted to say that as concisely as possible and as quick as possible, because I know he'd object to it. I thought, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to kind of drop the bomb on the guy. I said, yes, sir. I did that, yes, I knew he was blind, but he was a bad guy, he sent me a photo of his penis. As I said penis, the attorney didn't want the jury to hear that, right? Because that totally just destroys, totally destroys him wanting to make the argument to where I'm the bad guy, right? I'm not the bad guy. The blind guy's the bad guy. As I said penis, the, he screamed, objection, objection! He did not like that, it was too late, because I got it out. So after that, he just, he just completely changed the subject, he went on to the next question. Before they called me to testify, they put me in this little room beside the court, the courtroom, and uh, I was in there alone. I could hear a little, a little bit of what of what the attorney w was saying, and um, I, I couldn't make out what he was saying exactly, but I could hear just ever so faintly my name being being uh, used, and like a dog would perk its ears up after calling its name, it got my attention, you know, and uh, uh, I could barely hear it, but I, I thought, I thought. Why, why are they talking about me so much? This case isn't about me. Stop blaming me. I was on the stand for hours and he was just excoriating me the whole time. And uh, 
it was it was rather it was it was so intense. But um, I because I had to think the way he worded his questions, they were meant to screw you over. And so when he would ask a question, I would have to think, oh, okay, if I say this, how is he going to take that and then build off of that and go somewhere else with it? And uh, I, I, you had to see these coming from a mile away, and it was just almost exhausting. It was like, oh, my gosh. Uh, but it was hours, but it felt only like a few minutes being on the stand. It was, it was pretty, it was crazy. Anyway, there seems to be a community effort, and people trying to locate that video, 55 minutes long, where I pretended to be a 14-year-old girl. Um, met with a legally blind guy, he tried French kissing me on the couch, um, then I berated him in the stairwell and left. <laughs> um, I assure you, don't worry, someone has it, the police do in an evidence locker somewhere. Now if you also have that video, please do me a favor and do not share it. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really want my mom seeing that, it's kind of messed up. <laughs> but no, new video in t 2018 probably, no, I don't know, whatever works. Thank you all. And goodbye.